Hey everybody, this is Dr. Dane. Welcome to this installment of the Tour of Consciousness. What a great pleasure it is to be with you on Australia Day. I'm here in uh, Mooloolaba Beach in the beautiful Sunshine Coast in Australia and it happens to be the Aussie national holiday. So if you're Australian, I just want to say Aussie, 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 oi, 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 good on you. Now if you're someplace else in the world, that means nothing to you, but I'm in Australia. What are you going to do? There's all kinds of drunk, happy people around. Maybe they were happy before they were drunk, I'm not sure. Okay, so what's the tool for today? The tool for today is this lovely tool that I've shared with you before called allowance. Now, here's the thing. There are gonna be people in your lives that are gonna do things and they're gonna upset you and they're gonna frustrate you and you know what? What if you could be in allowance of it? In other words, what if you could just have it as an interesting point of view? And along with that is that if you're gonna change anything in your life, if you're actually gonna make that leap to step into something different than what was yesterday, if you're gonna demand that today be different than yesterday, it can get really, really uncomfortable. And that's where this tool of allowance comes in. Because what happens is, let's say you decide, you know what, I'm gonna change the way I feel about myself. I'm not gonna feel unhappy about me anymore. I'm not gonna not like me anymore. I'm gonna change this. Well, what that's gonna take for you to get from that place to this other place that you want to be is something different than what has been, but you don't know what it is and you don't know how to define it and it can get really, really uncomfortable sometimes. Even when you're heading towards something you really desire. So how many times in your life have you asked for a change and it started showing up and it got so uncomfortable you thought you must be doing something wrong? What if that discomfort is an awareness that you're actually doing something right? What if every discomfort that you've experienced on this path of change that you've been on is an awareness that there's something right you're doing and that what you asked for is actually occurring? Well, if that's the case, if you could look at it from this place, would it, instead of trying to make you believe that you were wrong somehow, would actually let you recognize, wow, you know what? I'm actually getting what I've been asking for. And here's the thing, if you're going to ask for some change and you get uncomfortable, then what ends up happening also a lot of times is the people around you get uncomfortable. The people you're in relationship with, the people you work with. But what if that weren't a wrongness either? What if it's that change in motion? So I'd like to present you a different possibility for a way you can be with it. Okay, so when that discomfort comes up, just be with that energy, be with that uncomfortableness. And number one, ask this question, is this the change I've been asking for showing up in a totally different way than I thought it would? And that'll let you stop judging you, hopefully. Hopefully that'll take you out of enough judgment to where you can recognize, you know what, okay, I've asked for change, it's actually happening, cool, maybe I'm not as wrong as I feel right now. Because a lot of times you'll feel wrong when you feel weird too. So is this the change that I've been asking for showing up in a totally different way? That's first, and then, and which hopefully will lighten things up for you. And then next, what you wanna do is you wanna go, okay, so interesting point of view, I feel this way. And then just be with it. And then notice how the energy shifts as you do that. And then again, interesting point of view, I feel this way. And then again, interesting point of view, I feel this way. Or if you want, if it's not a feeling, if it's a point of view you're having, go interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And you get to this place of allowance, which is what I started with, which is where everything can just be an interesting point of view. And when it is, and when you get there, you can care about the people you love, regardless of how uncomfortable things are appearing to get. I know this may be a little in-depth for some of you, maybe a little complex for some of you, but you know what? If you use it, it will start to change things in your world in a really simple, easy way. You'll allow any change to occur with ease. And I've got to tell you, unfortunately, sometimes change is uncomfortable, but that's actually what happens with change which is why a lot of people won't choose it because they don't have the courage to go through those uncomfortable times. Tour of Consciousness. Oh my God, how does it get any better than this? I'm on my brand new jet ski here in Noosa, Australia, Queensland. I know some of you are having snow right now. There are places that simply have amazingly warm weather. So what's the tool for today? Well, I guess it's kind of simple. How much fun can you have today? 
even if you are in the snow, maybe you can cuddle up by a fire, maybe with somebody you really care about, have a nice snuggle. What can you do today to enjoy this beautiful, amazing day that this amazing planet has gifted us? You know, even though I'm out here on a watercraft, a motor vehicle, it's kind of like being one with nature. I got to tell you, it's just, it's amazing to be able to sort of determine your own course. So, uh, one more tool for you. If I were truly creating my life today, here comes a wave, watch out. If I were truly creating my life today, what would I choose right away? I've got a big smile on my face because I'm in one of my favorite places, Sunshine Coast, Australia. Jet skiing. Well, not right now. I'm talking to you. I figured I'd take a break just for you. So, what's the tool for today on the Tour of Conscious? Well, a couple of things. Number one, happy Thanksgiving, by the way, to those of you in the U.S., although you probably won't get it until tomorrow anyway, but happy Thanksgiving weekend. And for the rest of you around the world, I'd just like to say thank you for being here. Thanks for being somebody who desires something different. I personally am thankful for my friend Brendan, who's escaping me on his jet ski while he films. But what a steady hand the man has. How does it get any better than that? So what's the tool? Well, check it out. I'm here and I'm going to facilitate a Symphony of Possibilities class tomorrow. And one of the things that people have talked to me about after access classes is, I feel like I'm even more aware of people's stuff. And there are times where you'll feel, especially during the holidays, like something is definitely going wrong in your world, where you feel like you're less close to people. Here's what you want to do. You want to ask, is my level of awareness exceeding my level of allowance? Because what happens is when you become really aware, you become really aware of how unhappy some people are, how mean, how depressed, you're leaving me, don't go. And, and so what you want to do is you want to ask, is my level of awareness exceeding my level of allowance? And just acknowledge that what's happening is you're getting a lot more aware than you were before. And you're aware of everybody else's stuff. And what you want to do is just go, okay, what's it going to take to increase my allowance? And everything that doesn't allow it, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, church, boys and beyonds. So, is my level of awareness exceeding my level of allowance? And what's it going to take to increase my level of allowance? Thank you for you, beautiful people. Thanks for being the gift you are to the world. And what have you truly been you are the gift and the change this world requires. I look forward to being with you next time. From the amazing, lovely, and beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia, where I'm facilitating an access consciousness level two and three. Sorry, my hand's shaking and I'm out of breath because I just went for a jog. It's been awesome. How does it get any better than this? So uh, check it out. I mean, look, it's like, there's the city, there's water, there's me. Hi, how you doing? Good to be with you. Okay, so what's the tool for today? Because you know, I like to give you tools because you know, they can change things, make your life happier, make your life better. So what is it? Well couple things. Number one is one of the favorite questions I've learned to ask, which changes my life, changes my day every time I ask the question. And that is, universe, show me something beautiful today. And the weird part is, it actually works whether you're having a phenomenal day, as I am right now, I'm so looking forward to getting into class and facilitating, or if you're having one of those days where you don't even want to be awake that day and you're like, ah, I don't want to be alive, because you know what, let's face it, we all have those days too. And you go, universe, please show me something beautiful today. And if you want, you can go pot and pock everything that doesn't allow that to show up. Literally every single time I have ever asked, I have been shown. Let me give you an example. Here's today's. <laughs> show me something beautiful today. Now, here I am in the middle of Melbourne. I, mean, I guess I'm not exactly in the middle, but I was in the middle. I was over there. See? Over there. And uh, I said, hey, universe, show me something beautiful today. And then I got this idea. I went to my iPhone, went to the Maps application, put in the little thing to see where I was, and then I looked for green space. And I put in the directions that said, head me to the green space, and guess what? Here I am, universe, show me something beautiful, and use your darn iPhone when you're in the middle of a city to find someplace green, someplace that's actually nurturing to you and your body and your being. Two tools in one, my amazing friends. So, from lovely and amazing Melbourne, I'm gonna go back, continue my job, go facilitate class, and uh, universe, Show us something beautiful today. Thanks for being from the lovely river in Noosa. Here to talk to you about a really cool discovery that uh, Gary Douglas, founder of Access, and I made recently, and that is about harmony. 
Now, it's not the concept of harmony that a lot of metaphysical people used to talk to me about, which is where you're in harmony with people who have the same judgments of you, but it's actually harmony with everything around you. It's the space that the plants and the animals function from. And it's the possibility for being in the world in a way that lets everything on this beautiful planet and around it, I guess, contribute to us. So right now, just close your eyes. Just feel your feet on the floor and just ask for the patterns of harmony that you can create and choose to infuse through your body. Cool. Now, what's interesting is ask and you shall receive. So when you ask that, it's like just a couple of seconds is all it takes before you notice a shift a lot of times in your energy, a shift in your day. I want to bring this concept to you because when you start choosing your life in harmony and in harmony with the things around you and in harmony with what is valuable for you and what you'd like to choose, all of a sudden everything changes, everything gets greater, it gets a lot more peaceful, a lot easier, a lot more fun. So here's a couple processes for you to change things. One is what patterns of harmony can I create that would change this? Whatever it is you're looking to change, maybe it's a money thing, maybe it's a body thing. Maybe it's a relationship thing. Maybe it's a happiness thing. What patterns of harmony can I create and choose that will change this? Everything that doesn't allow it, right, wrong, good, and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. And then what patterns of disharmony? See, unfortunately, most of the world functions from patterns of disharmony. So a way of undoing that is what patterns of disharmony am I using to create the blank I am choosing? So you could go, hey, I apologize for the shaking, by the way. My arm is tired. It was a, it's been an interesting jog this morning. Let's put it that way. Um, what patterns of disharmony am I using to create the blank I am choosing? And that could be, you know, once again, it could be the money thing, could be a body thing, could be an unhappiness thing. What patterns of disharmony am I using to create whatever the limited point of view is that I'm choosing? Everything that is times a gazillion, right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, poc, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Now, for me personally, I've noticed that as I've been running these processes, things just feel easier and smoother. I feel like I'm more in connection with the entire world. And it's like the rough edges of reality, the, the ones that were still remaining, seem to have softened dynamically. So if you'd like to walk through the world as a space of softness and the enjoyment of being, please run these processes and consider asking for that which is in harmony with you and enjoy it. Hey everybody, this is Dr. Dane. Welcome to this installment of the Tour of Consciousness. What a great pleasure it is to be with you from the Sunshine Coast here in Australia. There's the coast and there's the sunshine. How does it get any better than that? They came together. So here's the thing. What is the tool? Oh, by the way, sorry it's been a while since I've been with you. I've been busy. Had a lot of stuff going on. What's the tool for today? Well, the other day I went out jet skiing with my really good friend and one of the things I love to do here is go jet skiing. We've got a couple jet skis here and I love to go out jet skiing and I love jumping waves. That for me is so much fun. And what happens is a lot of people have told me, well, yeah, you know what? You can hurt yourself. And I thought to myself, I have never hurt myself. Yeah, you know, you get banged up, bruised up a little, but I've never ever even come close to seriously hurting myself. And I looked at that and I was like, for me, it's not about how I could hurt myself. It's about the adventure. It's about this great adventure of what am I gonna get to explore today that I've never explored before? What am I gonna get to experience before how much fun am I going to get to have while I'm doing this? And I realized so many of us have cut off the adventure in our lives. And I looked at that because we went out on a particularly treacherous day out in Maruchidor where they have this amazing set of waves that keeps coming in and coming in and coming in. And the waves were <coughs> big, really big. Some of them were like 15 feet tall. I mean, they were huge. It was so much fun. And for me, I got this sense of, wow, this is so much fun. And I realized a lot of the people that have told me over the course of my life, you're gonna hurt yourself. Don't do that, you're gonna be wrong. I realized that they have given up on the sense of adventure in their lives. And I thought about that for a moment and I realized that one of the things that I've learned from Access Consciousness is to follow my awareness. 
to know when not to do something as well as to know when to do something. See, we all have that awareness. If you think about doing something and it feels really heavy, feels really crappy, hey, feels really yucky. Malalabai Beach, woohoo! There you go, see, adventure. Ah, how does it get any better than that? That's what I'm talking about. Like, go say hi to somebody who's filming something, you know? Now, here's the thing. What happens is, if you're willing to follow your awareness, then you can have the adventure of everything. But what happened from the time we were little kids, we weren't taught that we had awareness. We were taught, oh, you need to be afraid. But fear never creates. Fear is always destructive. So if you have a sense of adventure and you want to actually explore it, I would say now would be the time and ask yourself, what is the awareness that I have that will let me know that I'm safe while I'm having my adventure? So there's two pieces of this, okay? Number one, look at and just ask yourself, you know what, if my life were an adventure, what would I choose that I'm not currently choosing? And everything that doesn't allow you to perceive it, to know it, to receive it, and to be it, will you just run and create it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. Okay, that's first. If your life were an adventure, what would you choose that you're not currently choosing? And some things may come up and it may surprise you. That's first. Second thing is, what is the awareness that you have that you've been cutting off that if you allowed yourself to have that awareness again, would allow you to have the freedom to experience life as an adventure. Because you know where to go, you know what to do, you know if you're gonna be safe or not. It's a lie that you don't. So all the lies that you bought, that you don't have the awareness of knowing when you're gonna be taken care of by the universe, knowing that you're gonna be safe, or knowing when you're not, to not do it, will you just run and create it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and puck, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. So it's a totally different way of living when you allow yourself to function from your awareness, you can again have the adventure of living, the adventure of being alive, and you can start to wake up and actually feel like you have blood coursing through your veins again, rather than wondering why you're so tired, wondering why you're not having any fun. Well, when you give up on the adventure of life and living, how can you have fun? So, it's a bit of a long-winded thing here, but I wanted to give you this awareness because it was so clear to me that in the time that I've been doing Access Consciousness, I've started having the adventure of living again. Actually, I dynamically have the adventure of living again. And it was when I got out of the fear and got into my awareness of what I knew was possible and also knowing that the universe would have my back and take care of me. So, everything that doesn't like to have the adventure of life and living again, to know that you have the awareness and to allow the universe to have your back and take care of you. Will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Okay, my beautiful friends, that is a very long tour of consciousness from me and beautiful Sunshine Coast Australia with the Australian woman busting in. How does it get any better than that? I look forward to being with you next time, my friends. Bye. What a great pleasure it is to be with you from Noosa, Australia. Oh, how does it get any better than this? I'm excited. I'm on a jet ski. That's why I'm dressed like this. All right, anyway. Uh, so what's the tool for today? <clears throat> well, I'm here facilitating a Symphony of Possibilities advanced training, which is where you start to open up to the subtle energies that are available in the world all around us to create whatever you'd like to create, but also to create change in whatever is currently going on. And it's been very interesting because both for me and a lot of the people that I've spoken with in Access over the last few months, it's like the things that we're asking for are showing up far faster, far faster than they ever have before, but it doesn't feel anything like the way we thought it would. It's almost like we create from almost like emptiness or something. And what that got me to thinking about was when I was, uh, you know, first starting my quote-unquote spiritual search or whatever and I was speaking with lots of people in, in uh, you know their self-help thing and what they were doing and in metaphysics and that and in metaphysics they talked about this void and it was very significant there is a void and what I realized is most people avoid what they call the void except what if it's not a void what if it's actually space what if it's actually the space of true creation and true possibilities. Because one of the things I've learned in facilitating lots of people around the world in the last 16 years is that when you have no point of view about something, creation can occur really fast. So, what's my point here that I'm trying to get to within, oh, you know, a few minute video is basically this. Stop avoiding that place where it feels empty because usually 
It's actually space. It's usually not emptiness, but we've decided that when we have no thoughts, no feelings, no emotions, no points of view about something, then we're empty. But what if you're not? So what have you decided is creation that actually isn't? That if you no longer had to have that as creation, would light actually create? Everything that is times a gazillion. Will you destroy and create it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, sure it's boys and beyonds. What have you decided is actually creation? Is creation that actually isn't? That if you didn't decide that was creation, would allow you to actually create? Everything that is times a gazillion, will you destroy and create it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, sure it's boys and beyonds. Now, why do I run this process? Because for a lot of people, they nobody really taught us what creation was. And there would be times where we would just, have you ever had one of those times where you would just ask for something and it showed up? Like you really had no point of view. It wasn't like, oh yeah, I've got to have it. Or you tried to work at it. It just showed up. Well, that more than you might realize is actually the space of true creation. So it's when you don't have a point of view, but a lot of people have decided that that's a void. And so they avoid that void when in actuality, that's the space of true creation. So one more process for you. This is a little bit more advanced. So if you're brand new to the Torah consciousness, please watch some of the other videos on the clearing statements and different things. So this one will make sense to you. Otherwise it's gonna go whoo. But here it is. So what have you made so vital about avoiding the void that keeps you from creating from the space of true creation and true possibilities? Everything that is times a gazillion. Way just run and create it, please. Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. What have you made so vital about avoiding the void that keeps you from true creation and true possibilities? Everything that is times a gazillion, we just run and create it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, sure it's boys and beyonds. And next time you get to that place where it feels like you don't have any thoughts, feelings, or emotions, ask yourself, is this a void or is this space? All right, beautiful people. Welcome to the space of creation, not the void or the avoidance of creation. Thank you for being part of the Tour of Consciousness, the video series that quite literally could change your life. What if you truly being you are the gift, the change, and the possibility this world requires? So there's something I actually want to talk to you today about um, called Acts of Consciousness. And we were, uh, my friend Gary and I were on a telecall yesterday, and it was about chaos being the creative source of all possibilities. And a lady on the call said, you know, these acts of consciousness, and we went, wow, you know what? That's exactly what's required right now, are actually acts of consciousness, where we actually start putting into action the consciousness that we are. So what is consciousness? Well, it's where everything exists and nothing is judged. Um, a lot of you may have seen my friend Melanie Clampett's post. Uh, she's there at Standing Rock right now. And for those of you that don't know, there's, they're trying to build an oil pipeline right through Native American lands and doing it illegally. And the beautiful thing that she talked about was, look, check your source of information. Be aware of what you're posting. Be aware of what you're sharing. Don't add to the hype. Create a different possibility. And that, in a sense, is really what the acts of consciousness are about. So I want to put this invitation in your world today. Uh, you know, it's a big day in the United States. And it's interesting because I've had people um, send me messages of gratitude. And every single one of those I receive, it's like, my goodness, what an amazing gift. It's like, it lights up my day, it lights up my life. So what if one of the acts of consciousness that you could do is actually start sharing your gratitude with people? See, this world is made up of all of us, and yet there are some of us that, based on where we've lived, our choices in life, um, there are some people that are closer to us, you know, some people that we know a little better than others. And when you express your gratitude for those people, that might change their world. Now. I gotta show you something. I don't know if I can show you on the video here, but the other day I was sitting here and uh, look at what we have. Do you see the little ducks? Check them out. And I was sitting here the other day and these six little ducks come up without their parents. Okay, their parents are here, which I'm really happy to see actually. And they came up and they're like, hi. And I was like, hi guys, how you doing? And it literally was, it was sunset and they just, these six ducks swam up. I was sitting here on the deck and these six little ducks swim up and they're just like, hi, good to see you. And I was like, oh, wow. And, and here they come again. Now, isn't it interesting that these sweet little creatures are just, I mean, just tap into their energy. You know, it's kind of like the way we are when we're being us. 
were like, hi, I'm curious and I don't have any fear and I like people and I like everything and it's all good. So we fed them some highly inappropriate duck food, um, Rice Krispies, because that's all we had in the house. And, uh, well, you know, two bachelors staying together, what are you going to feed a duck? You know what I'm saying? But apparently, if you ever do find ducks, they like uh, ground-up vegetables and uh, fruits. So just, you know, maybe this will save a duck someday in the future. But check them out. So these little guys are sort of walking acts of consciousness. And they just have such an amazing level of of sweetness, an amazing level of kindness, you know, and, and just presence. So I want to um, read a little something about the act of consciousness. And then the thing that I would ask you to do is ask yourself, what act of consciousness can I do today? Because what I'm realizing more and more and more is that it's actually our acts of consciousness that start changing the world. It's our willingness to be the consciousness that we are and contribute to people that changes people's lives. I mean, how many times have you had somebody who was having a crappy day and you just called them and said, hi. And they were like, oh my God, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for thinking of me. And just that changed their day. Imagine us multiplying that on a massive scale and choosing each day to do at least one act of consciousness. Can you imagine what would, I mean, just consider the possibility of what that could be like. Now, if you're hearing the, the they're doing construction next door. So um, there is not somebody in the house chasing people around with a saw, just so you know. Okay, so one of the things I want to say about the acts of consciousness, it's the willingness to have a question. It's the willingness to say, no, I won't do that, when you know it's not something to be done and not something that will create more. And it's also the willingness to never buy judgment as real. And so you want to ask yourself, what act of consciousness can I be or do today that will create a different reality right away? What act of consciousness can you be or do today that will create a different reality right away? I mean, Thanksgiving in the United States, and a lot of you around the world know that that holiday exists um, you know, because the United States' points of view are rather pervasive in the world. But it's going on in the U.S., but what if it went on for you, too, wherever you are in the world? And, you know, I know for me, uh, one of the things I'm going to do today is let the people in my life know how very, very grateful I am for them. And that can be one act of consciousness. And I will do as many as I possibly can today, because it's actually our actions that we take, in addition to the being that we be, that creates a totally different possibility for all of us. And this is the weird thing is like, we don't realize that our choice matters. You know, we don't recognize that us choosing to say something kind or choosing to get over the idea that, that uh, choosing to get over the idea that our impact doesn't matter changes everything for somebody. And for me, what I'd like to see is a kinder, gentler world. And I'm sorry, my selfie stick is shaking. I thought it would be better. I was holding my phone for the last 25 minute one that we did and it shook just as much. So I apologize. If you're getting vertigo right now, just hold on to the chair. Okay, cool. Um, and so this, the thing that I've recognized is courageous people being willing to step up and stepping up doesn't mean fighting anything. It actually means ending the fight that everybody else is doing not buying into the fight that everybody else is doing and recognizing what's actually true for you that's not true for anybody else. So on this American Thanksgiving, just wanted to share this information with you. And one of the other things, uh, Katerina that I work with really closely sent me this video yesterday of the mayor of New York, and maybe a lot of you have seen this, um, and talk about an act of consciousness. So I want to read what he said because Given the world that, or given what the United States is entering into right now, there are a lot of people who are in fear, a lot of people who are concerned. Now, the thing about access consciousness is we recognize that fear actually isn't real. I know it feels real, but usually it's either an implanted point of view, it's somebody else's point of view, or it's a lie you're buying about the circumstances around you. And what it does, it just keeps you from creating. It keeps you from having fun. It keeps you from enjoying your life. And you know what? We should all get to enjoy our lives. All of us, brown, black, blue, male, female, Muslim, Christian, Jew, undecided, atheist. By the way, did you hear about the um, agnostic dyslexic insomniac? Yeah, it was interesting because he laid awake all night wondering if there truly was a dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Maybe not my best joke, but you know, what are you going to do on short notice on a Facebook Live? Okay. So here's what the mayor said, and I love this. He said, here's my promise to you as your mayor. 
We will use all the tools at our disposal to stand up for our people. If all Muslims are required to register, we will take legal action to block it. If the federal government wants our police officers to tear immigrant families apart, we will refuse to do it. If the federal government tries to deport law-abiding New Yorkers who have no representation, we will step in. We will work and build on the work of the city council to provide these New Yorkers with the lawyers they need to protect them and their families if the Justice Department orders local police to resume stop and frisk. We will not, and if, well with the lawyers they need to protect them and their families. If the Justice Department orders local police to resume stop and frisk, we will not comply. We won't trade in neighborhood policing for racial profiling. If there are threats to federal funding for Planned Parenthood of New York City, we'll ensure women receive the health care they need. If Jews or Muslims or members of the LGBT community or any community are victimized and attacked, we will find their attackers, we will arrest them, and we will prosecute them. This is New York. Nothing about who we are changed on election day. We are always New York. Somos siempre Nueva York. Okay, so that's just one example. And I wanted to share that with you because when I heard that, now I uh, sent the video or some people that I know know about the video and they said, well, it didn't sound very sincere. I'm like, how sincere are most politicians that you've met? Okay, we're getting in the wind. Apparently the wind is getting into the conversation now. How does it get any better than that? Okay, so, you know, and they said that and I'm like, well, you know what? It felt pretty darn sincere to me and that somebody is willing to stand up and say that and say we will buck the system and we will have your back is truly an act of consciousness. So what act of consciousness can you do today that will change the world right away? And yeah, the thing, the post about what acts of consciousness can we be to Israel that's full of fires right now into the earth with all the latest events in the world. That's exactly the question. See, I don't have a conclusion, and this is the thing about it, is you want to not come to conclusion. Okay, actually functioning from consciousness is where you don't come to conclusion. And there are a lot of people, there, for those of you that don't know, there are a lot of fires in Israel right now. And, um, you know, there's the possibility that they're actually being started by people. And there's this interesting thing, because what you want to do is you want to ask the question, what acts of consciousness can we do that will change this? Like, for example, I just spoke with a good friend of mine in Israel, and she was kind of freaking out, having a terrible day. Well, can you imagine? It's like, you know, it's like with the people at Standing Rock. I, I would imagine a lot of them have been waking up having what they thought were terrible days. And what I spoke to her about was, okay, what's true for you? And if you be the space that doesn't align and agree, that doesn't buy the judgment, that doesn't buy the wrongness, what space of possibility do you present to the people around you? And this is the gift of you. And so uh, tomorrow I'm actually going to, if I can arrange it, look for the post. If I can arrange it, I'm gonna, I'd like to actually do a, a Facebook Live for Standing Rock and about Standing Rock, uh, building on what Melanie said so brilliantly in her Facebook Live post. And uh, try to create some sense of peace and ease for the people that are really concerned about this. And the thing is, guys, we are the change the world requires. And if you've ever noticed in your life, and one of the things I have the blessing of being able to talk about in class with people in the Access Consciousness classes I do, is that the time where you think it's absolutely the worst, where it feels like everything is just falling apart and, and everything is the worst it's ever been and you've never been conscious and you haven't changed and you're worse than you've ever been before, just take two more steps. Just take two more steps, okay? Our world has been having this kind of thing go on. The fires, the, you know, the divisive people, the what's going on at Standing Rock and our natural resources being consumed and destroyed in the, uh, in the search for money. We've had this going on forever. And I know for a lot of you, based on the conversations that we've had, somehow it seems like it actually looks worse and like the world is getting worse. My sense is it's kind of like exactly in your life where things look like they're getting worse. But if you just take two more friggin' steps and then two more beyond that, you have the breakthrough that allows you to have a level of lightness, a level of space, a level of ease, a level of joy that makes everything that came before it fall into place and, and, and gives you a lightness that where you go beyond all of that stuff and you may never have to go back to it again. And my sense is we're at that place in our world right now. And rather than maybe two more steps, 
maybe we're finally at the place where the insanity has gotten so high that those of us who have the willingness to see something different, desire something different, are actually going to be willing to have the courage to choose to create it and recognize that we are not going to let this planet be destroyed, not on our watch, okay? Two more steps, my friends. Please don't buy into the insanity. Please don't buy into the craziness. Please don't buy into the division and the separation. And please don't buy into the trauma and drama that everybody else wants to perpetrate. That's not our reality. And I totally understand because for the past few days, it's like I've been so, so aware and wondering, you know, and, and in my world for the last several years, there hasn't really been much wrong, okay? And never, and I haven't looked at anything as a wrongness. And yet it's been so intense in the last couple of days for me personally that I was starting to go to, is something wrong? And then I looked at it and I realized, no, I'm just really friggin' aware. And I think that's the place we are in our world. Two more steps. The insanity is finally being seen for what it is. Are we going to answer the call and answer the challenge and step up and be what we actually are? So that's my invitation for you today. You guys are beautiful. Thank you so much for being in the world. I can't tell you. And one other thing, I just want to acknowledge your courage. And a lot of times I know you don't think about yourself as courageous. You're like, yeah, I'm not good enough, you know, and that tends to be the judgment of you. But I'd like to acknowledge the courage you have. I mean, look at it. So many of you have experienced so many mean people so many judgmental people over the course of your life. You've experienced abuse. You've experienced poverty. You've experienced heartache, trauma and drama. You've experienced seeing what's going on on our planet right now and, and the consumption and the destruction of the earth by people who are just doing it for their own personal gain. And yet you have kept going. You have continued to put one foot in front of the other. And that is an amazing level of courage. Would you please be willing to acknowledge that as a courage it is and what if acknowledging that as a courage it is, is another act of consciousness? See, one of the greatest things about doing this work that I get to do around the world is the acts of consciousness that you choose truly create a different possibility. And what they do is they start to bring a lightness. And, you know, I've been doing my damnedest to give people tools for the last almost 17 years now to bring their lives to more lightness because I saw how much these tools and that change my life and recognize that the acts of consciousness that you choose actually build on each other. Okay. So it may seem really difficult today to get to allowance where everything is an interesting point of view. And if you don't know that tool, you just say interesting point of view. I have this point of view to any stuck energy, to any weirdness, to any yuckiness, and then it'll change. And you say again, interesting point of view. I have this point of view. And again, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And again, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And till you have no point of view. That is another act of consciousness. They're everywhere, really. But what they do is start to create a lighter, greater world for all of us. This is from lovely Noosa, Australia. See it out there? I'm trying to get out of the way so you can actually get a shot of the background. Wow. Uh, here on the river and uh, enjoying life thoroughly and... So what is the subject for today? Oh, by the way, thank you so much for those of you who've signed up in the last few weeks. It is wonderful to have you. Hopefully this series will contribute to you. And one of the things people have said many, many, many times, they've sent me emails saying, thank you so much. It's amazing how I was having the worst day ever and then you sent me this tool and it's exactly what I needed. And I gotta tell you, you know, one of the things we talk about in Access, and that's not even today's tool, but one of the things we talk about in Access is there's a simultaneity of gifting and receiving. And when you're actually willing to gift to somebody and they receive it, that's a gift to you. And that's exactly what happens with the tour of consciousness. It's like, it's amazing to me how many times I will get this sense of, okay, it's time to make this video, make the video. And then the feedback that I get has just been absolutely phenomenal. So please know my interest in making this video series is to contribute to you. And one of the things that we all have as part of our inherent way that we actually are is this generosity of spirit where we love to contribute to other people. And it's interesting because we're made wrong for it most of our lives, or we'll go to contribute to people. We'll go to give them something or we'll go to be nice to them and they give us a dirty look or we'll go to, Oh wait, I got to show you something. Hold on. Let me get out of the way. You see it? Huh? Here, wait, let me check it out. Let me see if I can do, Oh, let me try. I'm trying. I can't zoom, darn. But do you see the gondola going by? Isn't that cool? That's awesome. Anyway, um, 
So this simultaneity of gifting and receiving that occurs is when you receive the gift that somebody's giving you and you actually receive it with a sense of gratitude, that's actually a gift to them. So I wanted to point that out first. Uh, but what's our actual tool for today? Okay, so you got three so far, or two at least. What's our tool for today? Well, um, one of the things that I'd like you to have in your awareness is judgment. Ooh, fun tool. You're like, seriously? Why do we have to talk about that? Because it's one of the things that sticks us the most and it doesn't have to. What if it could be fun for you to receive the judgments that people are directing at you right now? One of the awarenesses I had, and actually my business partner, Gary Douglas, we were delivering a class, and one of the awarenesses we had is, for every judgment you're willing to receive, you make $5,000 more that year. For every judgment you reject, you lose 10,000. Now, how does, or, or every judgment you resist and react to, you lose 10,000. So how does that work? Well, if, what is receiving judgment? Well, if somebody goes, you're a jerk, and you go, wow, thank you so much, and you just let the energy through, you don't put up a wall, you don't resist and react, what happens is that actually increases your level of receiving. And one of the things that I found recently, which is really interesting, is that for an infinite being, if somebody who's truly functioning from no judgment, no rightness, no wrongness, for an infinite being, all sources of energy can be a contribution including that of judgment. Now, if you hear the noise behind me, that's because somebody's going by really fast on a boat, which, cool, good for them, I hope they're having fun. Um, but what if you could actually have a good time receiving judgment? And this is so counter to everything we've learned because we've learned that if somebody's judging you, you're doing something bad, you're doing something wrong, and you, you should stop whatever they're judging you for. But one of the things I found is when people judge you, it's just, because they're judging you. It's not because you're actually wrong. It's because they have a point of view that you're wrong for something you're doing, something you're being, or something you're not doing, or something you're not being. What if you could receive it and have a lightness and a joy even in receiving their judgments? And I know for a lot of you this is a, a, a sensitive subject because you have a lot of people who judge you on a daily basis. This is part of my attempt to get you to be willing and able to actually go beyond having a problem with the fact that you're getting judged. What if you could have fun with it? So just practice it right now. Okay, and this also combines with another access tool called Interesting Point of View, I have this point of view. Uh, so let me try to weave these two together uh, really quickly since we've already been, already been going for over four minutes. Uh, and so how does this work? Well, if somebody's judging you and you put up a wall or barrier, it's like the ocean against a concrete wall and it just keeps pushing against it, pushing against it, pushing against it, pushing against it to try to break it down. So they have to deliver more energy to try to break down the wall of your judgment. If instead somebody has a judgment of you, like for example, you're too much, you're too out of control, you have too much fun, you're too weird. If you push down the walls that you would normally wanna put up, push down the walls and just pull energy from them like crazy, what happens? within a few seconds they run out of steam. And so it becomes this gift where when people judge you, you don't have to make yourself small anymore. You don't have to make yourself wrong anymore. You don't have to make yourself less anymore. You don't have to pretend and create a problem because they're judging you. It's just their judgment. It's just their point of view. And remember, for every judgment that you don't put up a wall to, for every judgment you just push down that wall and allow to flow through you and allow yourself to receive, and remember, receiving doesn't mean you align and agree with it or resist and react to it. Receiving means you go, wow, cool, interesting, you have that point of view, push down the wall, pull the energy through, and it can actually become a source of energy for you, which is one of the greatest gifts you could imagine because then you don't live your life in resistance and reaction anymore. Now, how does that apply and how does that flow into our other tool, which is interesting point of view? I have this point of view. See, the time and the space when you're willing to have somebody judge you and not have a point of view is when you're free. If everybody out there could have a point of view about you, but you didn't have to resist and react to it, or and resistance and reaction is where you fight it, it's that negative polarity, it's like trying to go against the judgment. And then there's alignment and agreement, which is the positive polarity, which is where you go, oh my God, this judgment must be real and true. But what if it's just their interesting point of view? So what you wanna do is get the upset of some judgment that somebody's had of you in the last few days, weeks, months, whatever, that's still sitting in your world, 
and just say to it, just get that energy and go, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Cool. And now again, and what happens is usually just one time, the energy shifts, even if just a little bit, and then go, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And then notice as the energy shifts again, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And then again, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And again, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Now, for most of you, probably what happened is the point of view is gone. You don't even have that stuckness in your world. But you have to get really present when you use this tool. So these two things play together. What if you could actually enjoy receiving judgment, recognizing that it's going to contribute to your receiving dynamically, which will actually contribute to your income. And then for everything that's still upsetting you, any upset in your world, just take it and go, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Now, if you really want to use this next tool, the interesting point of view, write down the judgments that have hurt you in the last month that somebody's had of you. Just write down the person and you'll know the situation and the energy will be plainly apparent to you. And then sit there and get the energy and go, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And then again, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And then again, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And do it as many times as it takes to where you no longer have a point of view. This is a way of you creating the freedom for you getting out of the instinct to try to fight against other people's judgments and other people's points of view and giving you the freedom you've been looking for forever to not have to have a point of view, a wrongness or a rightness with their judgment. No longer having to resist, no longer having to align and agree, which is where you make it real and true. And they say, you're a jerk and you go, oh my God, I'm such a jerk. What if you're not? What if judgment is basically the lowest form of communication there is and that's just what we've learned and that's what they have learned. So what if you could enjoy it and actually rise above it? I don't know about you, but I'm going to say now's the time. We've been suffering people's judgments long enough. Oh, I just realized I had my sunglasses on the whole time. <laughs> All right, cool. So if you have judgments of sunglasses, mm, sorry. This from hey. one of my favorite places in the world, Queensland, Australia, the Sunshine Coast. Oh my goodness, how does it get any better than this? Now, since I've gotten here, it's been rainy. How unkind. I came here for sun. Ah. But apparently the earth needs it here. Um, and so I was happy to, you know, be here and enjoy the rain. And now I'm enjoying a little bit of sun. Hopefully before, hopefully it won't rain again. Who knows? Um, so there, I'm climbing into a palm tree because otherwise um, the lighting is terrible. One must pay attention to one's lighting when one is making a video. So there. So uh, what is the tool for today? Well, following on our subject of having ease with money, how many of you actually did the $100 million exercise? It's kind of weird, isn't it? It's like you go, if I had $100 million and then your mind just kind of goes blank. That was the whole reason I made it $100 million because you can't figure it out. It's not figure outable. And so none of your old paradigms can actually fit. So you have to go to a different space. So that was basically the purpose of that exercise. And also to get you to start pondering what it would be like if you truly had not only no problems with money, but never had to worry about it again, what would that be like? So today, our second installment of having ease with money uh, is what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to look at it. And if your financial situation changed right now, no particular amount, but if you had all the money in the world you needed right now and desired, and it just flowed with ease, what 10 things would change in your life? What 10 things would change? What 10 things would you like to change? Oh, now there's the win. Jeez, I tell you, it's not the best day to make videos. Hope you can still hear me. Ah! No, I'm, it, okay, the wind isn't that strong. Let's face it. It's not like I'm in Hurricane Harvey or something and my house is flooding or something like that. Been there, done that. Oh, by the way, for those of you who asked, thank you very much for your concern. Uh, our house is within a, just like a couple days of being done. I am so thrilled. Of course, I'll be in Australia for a month, so I won't get to see it, but the pictures look beautiful. Anyway, um, so what you want to do is you want to write down the 10 things. If your money situation totally changed, so you had all the money you wanted, whatever amount that is, what 10 things would change in your life? And then what three things would you do differently with regard to other people? Whoa, we're getting the blowing wind palm fronts. How does it get any better than that? Uh, and, and what three things would you do with regard to other people? You know, it might be donating to a charity. It might be starting a foundation. It might be, I mean, think about what you would do for other people that would actually be a gift to you and a gift to the world if your money situation changed. So I'm gonna ask you to write those 10 things down and those three things down. 
And then I'm gonna ask you to put it in a drawer where you're not gonna, ooh, I'm being attacked, ah! Australian bugs, you gotta watch out. They have more, they have more, you know, poisonous stuff. Oh, maybe it was a palm frond. Maybe it's a poisonous palm frond. Ah! I feel like Macaulay Culkin. Ah! Okay, welcome to Dane's brand. It's apparently going crazy today. Um, but, <laughs> okay, so you wanna write those dead things down. You wanna write those three things down. Maybe this is why I don't ever get as much done as I would like to, because I always go on to the next thing and start that, and then the other thing isn't finished. Maybe I'm learning something by making this video. Oh, so this video has been very helpful for me also. So the 10 things, the three things, write them down, put them in a drawer where you're not gonna see it for a very long time, like until you clean out the drawer. Like, another bug, my goodness. Mm. Um, apparently they like sweat, I just got back from a run. Anyway, so write the 10 things, write the three things, put them in a drawer where you're not gonna see it until you clean out the drawer. Oh, but before you do that, what you wanna do is you wanna look at those 10 things, look at those th three things and go, you know what, I'm asking for this now. Universe, I have no idea what it's gonna take to make this happen. I have no idea what it's gonna take to show up. I'm not gonna be vested in the outcome, but I'm asking for all of this and everything that doesn't allow it, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. And then put it in a drawer. And a few years from now, when you're cleaning out your drawer, hopefully not because your house got flooded, like mine did, had to clean out a lot of drawers. In fact, I just had to throw a lot of stuff away. Um, and you look at that list, I think you're gonna be kind of surprised. The universe has an amazing sense of timing and remember, ask and you shall receive is actually most, one of the most amazing forms of creation. So, my beautiful friends, I adore you. Oh, by the way, one other thing. I wanna point this out. There was an article in BBC News, um, one of the BBC newspapers, I don't know, online article uh, on BBC News that talked about all of these experts are now talking about the idea that goal setting doesn't really work. And I'm like, we have been saying this in Access for 20 years. Don't set goals, set targets, and also recognize, because I know, uh, why is this coming up right now? Because I know a lot of you have done this in the area of money, right? You set this goal and this goal and this goal and you never got to it. Well, I'm sorry, the seekers of the world, you guys don't function from goals. They just don't work for you. Here, let me turn this way. Oh, there you could see me. Hi, how are you? Uh, sorry, I made an entire video where all you could see was the blown out pool. Anyway, um, and so this whole goal setting thing, it, you know, we've been saying this literally for 20 years that setting goals doesn't work. And it, now you can set targets, but that whole thing of set a big goal and then break it down into smaller goals and do something every day, I'm sorry, for you and me, that ain't ever gonna work. And you know what? It's not because you're wrong. It's because you have a different way of creating called ask and you shall receive. So just wanted to point out that what we've been talking about for 20 years is again in the news by experts. But, why didn't they interview us? We're experts. We're experts on changing everything. Anyway, oh, we're also experts at having a really good time and enjoying our lives and having too much fun. And that whole mantra of access, all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. What if it could occur in this area too, and with money and with everything else? Everything that doesn't allow it, right and wrong, good and bad, bod and pock, all nine, choice boys. Emil. From lovely Noosa, Australia, one of my favorite places in the world. Guess what time it is, everybody? Guess what time? Holiday time! Yay! Oh no, it's holiday time again. <laughs> you know, this time that's supposed to be so happy. And it's interesting because there are probably one in a thousand families that get together and really truly care about each other and don't have any judgment of each other. And it's awesome. And if you have one of those, that is great. And hopefully the tool for today will still apply to you. But I was having a conversation with some Being You Certified Facilitators this morning. And <clears throat> we were talking about holidays amongst different things. And one of the things I realized goes on during the holidays, especially when you get with family and friends, it's this weird part of the year where you feel like you have to totally defend everything about you. Like, oh no, I'm making the right choices, mom and dad. I'm doing something different. I am a better person. Especially those people that have judged you your entire life or where you judge yourself in relationship to them. See, the difficulty is we can't really blame them because we're the ones making the choice to do all this stuff and judge ourselves in relationship to them. So how do you get out of that, okay? This is one of the things I'll be talking about on the, the thriving during the holidays telecall that I have coming up because this is huge. And so what happens is when you're a little kid, you're like this little bundle of light, like you met little kids, right? You, at least, you've seen at least one baby in your life, right? And you know how they're just like happy and they're like high and they smile and they giggle and they laugh and whatever and it's just awesome. 
Well, there you are. Imagine you as that little baby, little bundle of light on legs. How does it get any better than you? How does it get any lighter than you? And then what happens for whatever reason, maybe like you want, I don't know, you want mom to love you the right way or something, or you want to fit in and be normal. What you do is you overlay that with everybody else's points of view. And so here you are, you're this little bundle of light. And a lot of you have been on the tour of consciousness for a while. And thank you, by the way. Um, and so you've gotten this tool, which true makes you lighter, a lie makes you heavier, or you've been in an access consciousness class where we talk about this from moment one, right? So you have an awareness of what is true is light for you. What's a lie is heavy. But when you go to family, it feels like so much is heavy so much of the time and you just look for the lightness, but you can't seem to find it. You know why? Because what happens is here's you, which is light around you. You put other people's points of view and other people's way of functioning in the world. And so the way this works is now you think this is you, this, this ball of blah, and now an energy comes in. Let's say, you know, your mom looks at you or your dad says the thing that he always says that sets you off and it gets filtered through all this stuff. That's not you. And that gets activated and you think that is you. And then you respond from there. Now, the other thing that happens is when you have bought all of these points of view as yours, when they're not, the weirdest part is when something comes out from the, comes in from the outside and gets activated and lights up, you'll respond from that because it's not you in the first place. You, you decided somewhere it was a good idea to be more like other people. And what you do is you literally take an overlay of their reality and put it over you. And so now you're responding from their overlay of reality, their schematic of reality, if you will. And what happens is now you respond. So your dad does this and you respond in the way you always have. And then you get angry with you. But then you also defend having this point of view because you decided it was so vital for you to have it that you're not willing to let it go. And now you're really stuck. Okay, so two things I want to run with you and then I'll let you go have a happy holiday season. Um, and we have a lot more to talk about by the way, but you know, in a five minute video, what can you do? Okay, as much as possible, hello. Okay, first thing I want to do is there's this thing that we found in Access called galumping. What is galumping? Where you take all these different things and you shove them together. And then when any one of them gets activated, they all light up and get activated. And you go into this weird freak out and you can't find a way to get to the lightness of what's actually true for you. So the first thing I'd like to do is just ponder for a moment. How many other people's points of view and realities have you galumped together that aren't even yours that you've been living with and functioning from your whole life? All of those and everything you did to glump them together and stick them together inseparably, will you now destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. I'm gonna do that one more time. Oh, oh, hairball. Uh, because it's got a bit of energy to it. So everything you've done, all the glumping that you've done of other people's points of view, other people's realities, that any time one of those gets activated, they all get activated. Everything you did to glump them together, will you now destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Now, when you're at your family, you know, and you're having holiday time and something weird comes up, go, everything I glump together that creates this. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. And what'll happen is if you do that enough, the pieces will start to break apart. Like, for example, let's say you bought, you know, your dad's reality about money because he was stressed when you were a little kid. He may not even be stressed anymore about it. But when you were a little kid and you were in the middle of that, now this thing about money is sitting in your world. Let's say you bought your mom's point of view about boys and you bought your dad's point of view about boys and you bought your friend's point of view about relationship and you bought your mom's point of view about relationship and sex and all this. And blah, blah. Well, if you run this process enough, what will happen is they'll start pulling apart and now you can look and go, oh, that's not mine. That's my mom's point of view. That's not mine. That was my friend's point of view when I was a kid. That's not mine. That was my dad's point of view. That's not mine. That's how I learned to resist and react to my dad because that's how I thought I was going to preserve me. So you'll start to get this sense of being able to not have all that stuff get activated at the same time. And then you'll be able to find it and then you'll be able to change it. Yay. The happy time <laughs> could be that you are the greatest gift you give yourself this holiday season. Um, Meme, oh my gosh, what if you're the greatest gift you, get, you give you this holiday season? 
Oh, I made a meme during the tour of consciousness. That's awesome. Look for that one somewhere. It'll have like a Santa and a baby goat. Anyway, um, story for another time. Uh, oh, the other one. The other thing that we do is we go into major defense during the holidays, especially when we're around people that we're close to. And what does close to mean? Well, we've been around these people long enough and we've been judging each other long enough and judging ourselves long enough to where we feel close to them. Hey, awesome. How does it get any better than that? So here's a process for you. Who or what are you defending for or against that if you didn't defend for or against it would allow you to have and be all of you? Everything that is times a gazillion will you destroy and uncreate it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. One more time. Sorry, I'm trying to get into good lighting here. Um, I'm standing in the bushes. I'm like in the bush. I'm like, I am a bush. Uh, that's oneness. Oh my God, I'm like totally a bush right now. This is so cool. Um, who or what are you defending for or against? That if you didn't defend for or against it, we'd like to have and be all of you. How's that? Everything that is times a gazillion. We just run and create it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. And one more time, and this is the way you want to run it. Let me give you this way so you can run it for yourself if you're not familiar with these processes or if you're a little bit familiar. You want to run it like this. Who or what am I defending for or against that if I didn't defend for or against it would allow me to have and be all of me? Everything that is times a gazillion will you destroy and uncreate it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. So, uh, what would it be like if during this holiday season, you finally got to pull apart all that stuff that you have galumped together that doesn't allow you to have space, lightness, and choice, and then you could get out of having to defend your very being against the people that you feel like you've had to defend against your whole life. Just for a moment, you notice the space? You notice the peace and the ease? Well, are you willing to make the request and demand of you that you choose that this holiday season? I mean, why not? No time like the present, right? Might as well start 2018 off with a bang of lightness and possibilities, maybe in contrast to every year before this one. I'm gonna say now's the time. There's a rule in filming. As soon as you start record, something noisy will happen. So, you know, if you're in a quiet place, maybe like the tundra, you know, maybe northern Sweden or something right now, or, uh, you know, someplace where nobody is, press the record button on any device and you will find something noisy. Hmm, that is actually not the tool for today, but I wanted to share with you. I mean, who, who, who has a biplane flying over when you're doing a video? Anyway, uh, what is the tool for today? Well... Let's see, I've got about a billion of them right now. I know it's been a little while, so uh, it is truly a pleasure to be with you. Uh, had so many things going on, I have not gotten in front of the camera very much, uh, at least not my phone camera. And uh, so, tool for today. What beyond this reality acknowledgement am I not giving myself? Whoo! Now, I know it may sound like nothing, but check it out for just a moment, okay? I was having a knockdown drag out, uh, you know, argument with my best friend, um, Gary, the founder of Access. And both of us are interested in possibilities, right? Both of us have access tools. Both of us were asking questions. And yet we were going at it. And it was a bunch of stuff that had been there over many years that we had never really resolved. We didn't even know it was there. And so it started perking its ugly head up. And we were literally just like going at it in a restaurant in Rome recently. And the waiter comes in, he's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I was like, don't worry about it. We're just being Italian. And Simone Milicis, our worldwide coordinator, had been listening to the conversation and she raised her hand. It was so cute. She raised her hand like a little kid in kindergarten because <laughs> there's two grown men who never, like we're uh, lovers, not fighters. You know what I mean? It's like, well, it's not really our style to go after somebody. And we were going after each other, which was kind of fun and entertaining and awesome. And, uh, and she raised her hand, you know, afraid of probably getting yelled at or something. I don't know. And she said, guys, uh, this really does seem to be about acknowledgement, you know, where I was looking for acknowledgement for something. He was looking for acknowledgement for something. And we were looking for acknowledgement for thousands of things probably. And no, nothing was going anywhere until she said that. And I said, yeah, you know what? We need to look from beyond this reality at this. And so Gary came up with this amazing process. He says, what beyond this reality acknowledgement are we not giving each other? 
And we ran that two times. And within two times of running it, we had tears of gratitude for each other. And, you know, we gave each other a hug and we're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm so sorry too. I mean, we were just, it was awesome. It's one of those moments that truly gives you an awareness of how quickly things can change, how dynamically they can change. And, and the, what I got from that, and I've been using this tool for a while now, and I sort of debated whether to share it or not, because I don't know if it makes sense to most people. It's just I've sort of been doing this as my life, you know, like, like looking for other possibilities and also not wanting to get stuck in the crap that seems so normal to most people here, where you feel it's you're, you know, you're, you're justified in getting angry at people that you care about. You're justified in separating from them. Well, um, yeah, but what's that creating is your life. So, um, we ran this process two times and it just changed everything. And what I realized in that was we were looking from the reference points of this reality to determine what the other person had done right or wrong. And I was looking at what I had done right and done wrong. He was looking at what he had done right and done wrong. And once again, I say, it's like, we don't tend to do this very often. Um, and so when we do, or when we did, dear Lord, was it intense. And it wasn't really as much fun as, um, as I might hope it would have been. It wasn't fun at all. So in running this process, what beyond this reality acknowledgement are we not giving each other? You can do that in a relationship. So with you and anybody else, but then you also want to look at what beyond this reality acknowledgement am I not giving myself? Because the way this reality works, it's kind of like a Truman show. You know that big dome that Truman lived in? And if you haven't seen it, you really need to watch it. Uh, it's a great example of this reality. But basically, this guy's living in this totally artificially created reality. And it's a big dome. It looks real to him. And the only way to get out of it is to go on a boat. And so they instill fear in him from the very beginning of water so that he will never get on the boat and leave because he'll be too afraid. And it's it reminded me so much of this reality. I'm like, oh my God, we're living in a Truman show. And when we got this process of what acknowledgement beyond this reality am I not giving myself or are we not giving each other? It all became very clear to me because what was going on with my bestie, my best friend and I, changed instantly. So now I'm not saying if you do it with somebody else, it's going to work. You know, if you've been on this path of change for a while and, and you know, you are willing to have a reality beyond this one or an awareness of something different and that this reality isn't all there is, then it'll work for you dynamically. And this will start to unlock the places where you haven't been able to get there. If you haven't, I don't suggest running it with anybody else or with somebody who hasn't done that. I don't really suggest running it with them, but I want you to have it. And yes, it'll be up on YouTube eventually and people around the world will find it and go, what the fuck were you talking about? And I'll go, I don't know, because I've forgotten by that point. Anyway, what beyond this reality are you not, uh, what beyond this reality acknowledgement are you not giving yourself? That if you did, would make your life ease, joy, and glory. Everything that is, right, wrong, good, and bad, pot, and pock, all nine shorts, boys, and meals. One more time, what beyond this reality acknowledgement are you not giving yourself that if you did, would make your life ease, joy, and glory? Everything that doesn't allow it, right, and wrong, good, and bad, pot, and pock, all nine shorts, boys, and meals. Um... So with this thing of beyond this reality acknowledgement, you want to recognize that there's a world there. How do I put it? It's like basically this world functions on some very strict rules about you being right and you being wrong and what other people need to give you in order to show that they're being kind to you in order to show that they love you. And what's really possible, what's really available is truly a world of kindness and possibilities where you can see, where you can acknowledge, where you can be grateful for the gift that every single person in your life is. And you don't have to make them wrong and you don't have to make you wrong. And there's a totally different possibility available. So if you're willing to allow yourself to have that, what else would be possible? So once again, what beyond this reality acknowledgement am I not giving myself? Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and meons. What beyond this reality acknowledgement am I not giving myself that if I did, would create my life as ease, joy and glory? And for somebody you're in relationship with, what beyond this reality acknowledgement are we not giving each other? Because when you start to acknowledge each other beyond this reality, magic truly starts to occur. And then life gets so much fun. And then you wonder, why did I have those problems? What were they there for? Why would I do such a thing? Oh, well, yeah, you did. You came, you saw, you created crap. 
And now you have a process to get out of it. I adore you immensely. Thank you so much for being in the world. And what if you truly being you are the gift, the change, and the possibility this world requires. I look forward to meeting you in person someday. Bye-bye. 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 Yeah, I did that three times. I just wanted to see if you were watching. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.